Guys, guess what? That's right. It's New Drop Friday. Disgusting and probably illegal. Disgusting and probably illegal. Oh my God, we're gonna arrest you! Um, 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 oh my God, we're gonna arrest you! The news and the left promotes pedophilia. We got Joe. We got Joe. We got Joe. I'm actually thinking about turning this into a Joe Rogan Clips channel, where I just illegally upload his clips. Well, guys, it's a little bit of a rough week. It's a little bit of a rough week for old Joe, you know? The news and the left promotes pedophilia. You know, he's done some things that are disgusting and probably illegal. Already that one's a winner. Some pretty bad news for Joe this week, okay? They came out with a big report that this drug, he was really into this drug. I don't know why he got really into this. He got really into this drug that I feel like YouTube takes down videos from me. You know, I make fun of these people on YouTube who are like, gay pe being gay should be illegal or whatever. No problem. I say the word of a thing and my video gets it taken down. So let's just say it's a, a drug that Joe Rogan was really into during the pandemic. Makes me, the way that I, I think of it in my brain is Allen Iverson. The Allen Iverson drug. So you fill in the blanks on that one. And some news has come out that it is useless. I mean, a huge study came out about it that it is useless against a little thing I like to call COVID-19. This is from Fortune. Study finds Allen Iverson, the horse drug. <laughs> Come on, guys, give a Joe a break. The horse drug Joe Rogan championed as a COVID treatment does nothing to cure the virus. From the New York Times, the study which compared more than 1,300 people infected with the coronavirus in Brazil who received either the drug that Al Allen Iverson invented when he wasn't playing basketball and he named it after himself. That's why it's named that. Or a placebo effectively ruled out the drug as a treatment for COVID. The authors uh, say, the study authors said, there's really no sign of any benefit, said Dr. Boulware, an infectious disease expert at the University of Minnesota. Oh man, come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Well, poor Joe. The reason he was all into this is because of that guy, Brett Weinstein, from the Dark Horse podcast, which I just realized is funny because people are calling these horse pills. Don't call them horse pills. Where did you hear about them? From the horse podcast. And again, there's a big part of this show is if you start some kind of podcast, don't name it. So, oh, the, the Dark Horse. But you still, if you want to say, if you're thinking about starting a podcast... This is what you do, okay? Instant bunch of listeners, okay? Call it Come Town 2. And then, you know, they'll those guys will come after you. Hey, that's our name. And you say, no, this is 2. So we're going to keep a little eye on the Dark Horse podcast to see if they come out with an apology. <laughs> hey, you know how we encouraged all these people to do something that put their lives in danger? Yeah, we're sorry. We're sorry. I'm not going to hold my breath on that. You know what? I think that's why they call it the Dark Horse Podcast, is because you're driving, you're like, is that a horse? I can't see. It's kind of dark. Sort of like the apology. Sort of like the apology. I don't th I don't see an apology. <laughs> that, that's probably the stupidest thing I've ever said. But poor Joe, he was worked up into a pant frenzy, okay, about this whole uh, people calling it horse pills. Oh, Joe's gobbling down those horse, all that horse pills. Okay, by, by the way, Rogan didn't stop there. He also went after Gupta because he's on CNN. And he was like, um, so I took Alan Iverson. And people kept saying on CNN that it was horse dewormer. And uh, you guys are liars. Here is, here's Rogan just shellacking Gupta over it. Horse dewormer is not a flattering thing. I get it's that. It's a lie. It's a lie on a news network. It, and it's it, a lie that's a willing, that's, that's a lie that they're conscious of. This is not a mistake. Yeah. They're unfavorably framing it as veterinary medicine. Don't you think that a lie like that is dangerous on a news network when you know that they know they're lying? He was really pissed off. People were calling it horse pills. But now it's like, okay, you were either taking horse pills because of the dosage required, or you were taking a completely ineffective drug because of a YouTube you like. I'm going to go horse pills on that if I was Joe. Be like, okay, I took horse medicine. God damn it. The Joe Rogan experience. Let's break down how that works. Okay. So, first of all, what are the numbers? What's the number of homeless people in Los Angeles currently? Because Los Angeles is the big problem. If you'll be the governor, you're going to have to deal with, obviously, San Francisco is the other big problem. San Diego, much less so. 
Okay, so this is episode 1798 of the Joe Rogan Experience with a guy named Michael Schellenberger. And they're talking about homelessness. And um, I don't know where Joe Rogan finds these people, but um, I would consider I would consider this to be just straight up misinfo. I mean, poor Joe. I like Joe. You know, I like there's something I like about old Joe Rogan. But he digs up <laughs> he digs up kooks to say things that are obviously not true. So uh, here we go. Yeah. So roughly speaking, you're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of 200,000 people in the state. It could be that many. It's a daunting task when you consider it, okay. particularly since the models that we have are of the five European cities that shut down their homeless encampments. My one well, thing I discovered is that the Europeans called them open drug scenes. Mm. We euphemistically refer to them as homeless encampments, which makes them sound like they're roasting. They're making marshmallow s'mores. Yeah, and then also it brings us back to that they're down on their luck. Right. Narrative. Right. That's that they're okies is the yeah. picture. They're just okies. Okay, we'll ease into this with this one. This is kind of a weirder one, but he says in Europe, in these five European cities, they don't even call this I get uh, homeless they don't even call homeless encampments homeless encampments. They call them open drug scenes. So I tried to look into what he's talking about here, and there's a study from 2014 called Open Drug Scenes. Responses of five European cities. The problem with this is that this is not a study on homeless people. This is a study specifically targeting people who who use drugs out in the open. I'll give I'll give you an example of what this study is about. There are approximately two hundred to three hundred users who belong to a drug scene around the central train station in Frankfurt's red light district. Here, a small a small group here a small group of thirty to fifty persons are quote causing trouble and are viewed as unruly and have no respect for the police. And then they lived in tents. And so oh, this okay. archetypal, when, you know, people that would never go and talk to homeless people or inter- much less interview them, they look at those tents and they go, they're poor people. That's like how the mentality works as opposed right. to like, no, no, they became addicted to hard drugs. They stopped working. They overstayed their welcome with friends and family. They were, they usually often, often stole money or lied or cheated from the folks they're staying with and then they were finally kicked out onto the street and then they go just live in the open drug markets and the open drug markets become the open drug scenes so remember this guy's running for governor in california and because he wants to take charge of this homelessness situation where he's going to have to look at information look at data and then make decisions on how to fix this problem and he's making the claim here that the way be, the way people become homeless, the why all these people are homeless in Los Angeles specifically, they're talking about, is because they got addicted to hard drugs, stopped working, and then became homeless. Does this make sense? According to the Los Angeles Homeless Service Authority, the lead agency in the Los Angeles Continuum of Care that coordinates housing and services for homeless families and individuals in L.A. County. The rise in homelessness. Here we go now. Here we go now. Disgusting and probably illegal. The news and the left promotes pedophilia. The rise in homelessness here is a result of stat... Here we go. Of stagnant income, rising housing prices, lack of investment in mental health services, lack of tenant protections, and discriminatory land use. Here's here's another little interesting piece of information that... uh, these guys could check out if they wanted to. Um, This is amazing. This is from NPR. A few years ago, a team of economists at Zillow found that once cities cross a threshold where the typical resident must spend more than a third, remember the rule? Once a city crosses that threshold where the typical resident must spend more than a third of their income on housing, homelessness begins to spike rapidly. And it has nothing to do with Housing, how we do housing. These people are just drug addicts, man. These people are... Disgusting and probably illegal. (laughs) When incomes don't keep pace with the cost of rent, a cascade effect... A cascade effect ripples through the housing market. High-income folks start renting places that middle-income folks... Folks used to rent. Middle-income people start renting places that low-income people used to rent, and low-income people are left scrambling. So the whole thing just shifts upward, and more p- 
obviously. And the more people are left at the very bottom, and oh my god, what a shocker, it increases the percentage of homeless people. Oh no, these people just love those jazz cigarettes of marijuana. But PragerU has been, uh, yeah, promoting a documentary that's saying the exact same thing that this guy is saying. If drug addiction were the main driver, then one thing you would probably see would be the states with the biggest drug arrest, da 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 da, but highest rates of drug use uh, indicators, drug arrests, and so on, would have the most homeless people. Guess what? They don't match up at all. They don't match up at all. What homelessness does match up with, rate of homelessness does match up with, is high cost of living. So, whoops. You messed up again, bro. So this is all another way of saying, You're a moron. You're, 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 you're a moron. Come on, Tuck, man. That's a little bit harsh. It's almost as bad as the fact that the news and the left promotes pedophilia. They do. It's true. Here's another little inconvenient fact. It's from February 22nd, 2022. 51,000 homeless students are in L.A. public schools. So are, are we saying that these students are all heroin addicts now, too? I mean, ee, that's a tough one. That's a tough one, my bro. Wait a second, students? I thought these were all scary drug addicts. Disgusting and probably illegal. I still I still like Joe Rogan, but I do feel like he does talk about homeless people in LA a lot, you know? And I always get the vibe that Joe Rogan like look he's like, ugh, yuck, yuck. Like I kind of get a little bit of I get a little bit of like my mom attitude toward homeless people that Joe uh Joe has the same feeling. He's like Ugh, I'm trying to look around. One of the characters in San Francisco, he was like, when we were walking through the Tenderloin, which is like the skid row of San Francisco, he goes, yeah, that's the doorwell I used to sleep in because I didn't want to walk the, f I didn't want to walk five blocks away to the shelter. I wanted to be right where the drug dealers were. Disgusting and probably illegal. <laughs> oh, guys. Oh, I f***ed up again. I messed up again. I'm going to stop doing YouTube. I take down this channel immediately. Because I just provided a whole bunch of information, you know, based in science, based in research. And then this guy told a story about a homeless guy he met. Oh, there was this guy and he was a scary guy. And he said, I used to sleep there. Okay. I mean, is that that's, that's a bad story? Okay. So can we look at some actual information now? You're trying to be governor. Oh, my God, we're going to arrest you. The news and the left promotes pedophilia. So housing is one of the main, like, indicators of how's a society doing? How's a society doing? And what I think this guy is about, and the PragerU documentary that's being heavily promoted and, you know, advertised on YouTube and all this stuff, is people know, I mean, if you look into this a little bit, you'll see, and if you just look at your own life, I mean, I look at my own life and I, it's obvious that um, the market is not working for housing especially in any larger city, it's just not working. It's just not working out. There needs to be some kind of intervention where there's affordable housing. There needs to be taxes on some of these, uh, you know, let's just call them millionaire podcasters, um, multimillionaire Spotify <laughs> podcasters, to build more affordable housing, to build public housing, social housing, but some of these people, they don't want to talk about that. They don't like that, you know. So that's what this stuff is. That's why it sounds weird, too. It's like, why are we moralizing? Why are we doing all these stories about scary drug addicts and scary people and all this? And of course, absolutely, there should be more invested in getting people who are drug addicts help, of course. Two separate issues, homelessness, drug addiction, Oh, the reason, the reason there's higher percentage of homeless people is just because of their own personal failing. I don't know if Joe Rogan is into this stuff. He's just like into this kind of stuff or what the deal is here. But I looked this guy up and basically he's sort of like he writes books about how climate change is not a big deal and all this kind of stuff. And I found this tweet about him uh, where he's talking about these open drugs, what he calls open drug scenes. Open drug scenes, <laughs> I guess... I guess he would say also known as homeless encampments. <laughs> homeless encampments are worse are worse in rich cities because they're dominated by progressives 
who allow illegal camping, open drug use slash dealing, and public defecation. Public... You know what I say about that? Disgusting and probably illegal. <laughs> woke victim ideology equals, or or let's let's say it this way: woke victim, woke victim ideology leads to homelessness. No, no uh, link, no link to any numbers or studies on that. Hmm. Just the kind of thing that, like, if somebody like Joe Rogan hears it, he's like, "That makes sense." That resonates. That clicks with my little tingly. That makes me tingly. So I like it. And when bad policies get in the way of a city and turn it sideways, which is what has happened to San Francisco. Yeah, pathological altruism. I, I, I've uh, held. I like that word. Yeah. I like that expression. It's not mine. I mean, I just, I just, you Good. know, it synthesized a bunch of other people's stuff. But yeah, I mean, I considered whether it was Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Mm, why so? Well, so Munchausen syndrome by proxy, of course, is when, like, a parent deliberately poisons her child in order to be able to treat the child for illness. Yeah. Disgusting. So we have probably. one of the Is it just ch children? It's like... They call it radical compassion. This is, you know, there's a chapter on my book called Love Bombing, but it's basically, this is the big blind spot for progressives. Are you is aware? That they just can't conceive that being radically compassionate could cause harm. And, and radical compassion, the idea is you're going to accept these people for who they are, the, the fact they're drug users, and you're going to give them a comfortable, safe place in order to do their drugs. Yeah, radical. Sorry. And by the way, it's radical hospitality is, is what they call it. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> probably illegal. I don't think old Joe is doing this on purpose, but this adds a whole nother creepy le level layer to this where we know, we know, okay? that what pushes the percentage of homeless people up is going to be cost of living. It's This is fairly obvious, right? Low wages, high cost of living. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there's a problem. But then to have the, <laughs> to have the balls, frankly, to have the balls to say, oh, we're actually being too nice to these people. That's the problem. It's disgusting and probably illegal. Yeah, we know for sure by the numbers that uh, if you don't pay people enough and housing prices are going through the roof, that you're going to increase the amount of homeless people. But we're just too nice to these people. That's the problem. And by the way, in this clip that's publicly uploaded and viewed by, what, 1.5 million people in two days, this Joe Rogan clip, they don't mention cost of living besides to say, of course, that's not the problem. Okay, okay. So all these people are a bunch of drug addicts. What do we do? What's the how, how do we deal with this crap, man? But that means that you need the three key P's. More police, more psychiatry, and more probation. So that... Two, wait. So two of the P's are probation and police? Again, sort of weird that one of those P's isn't price of living, which is the main driver of homelessness. It's the two P's. PP, I call it. Police and punching. But the uh, the type of stuff that he's advocating for here doesn't seem to work. Uh, they usually reference the, I think it was the mayor of San Diego. He did like this exact kind of crap that he's talking about where you throw police at these people. You make them go in these temporary like tent shelters. And um, if you look, didn't work. Didn't work. So there we go. Joe Rogan, he lives in my town. Joe Rogan, we live in the same city, but he has yet to ask me. I have... Must that invitation must have gotten lost in the mail. I was here first, so I deserve to go on the podcast. Joe, I know you watch this show. Let's hang out. Let's be bros. Let's hang out. Let's go around town. I'll show you all the great places around town that people don't know about, you know, that'll take you to, you know, the good CVS, the 7-Eleven I like to go to, the Taco Bell that's open at t until 2 a.m. So uh, there we go. Typical Joe on his bullshit. Hey, are you kind of a kook? Come on my show. We'll see. You know, if this guy uh, wins for governor, seems like he's not really uh, looking too much. Um, not all of his ideas are bad. He was talking about, in this interview, he was talking about um, having people who do have drug problems to uh, have case managers that would track their progress on um, getting healthy and so on. That's fine. But again, separate issue from homelessness. But... And then, you know, you're trying to do your fentanyl, and then the police come and they say, Oh my God, we're going to arrest!
ask you! It's sick. Leave us alone. It's Friday, guys. You know what that means. Time to party. Time to party. And by party, I mean watch Severance on my tablet. <laughs> Eat a treat at 3 a.m. and then fall asleep. Party! Party! Well, guys, love you so much. Have a good weekend. You know, don't do anything that is disgusting and probably illegal. And always remember, the news and the left promotes pedophilia. Have a good weekend, my guys. Love you. And oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I forgot something. If you are watching this on Friday before 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, live stream. Live stream. Okay? Live stream. You know that guy, that meme? This is you getting ready for the live stream. It's disgusting and probably illegal. Okay? So please cut the crap. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Hey guys, you're only getting a fraction of the weekly shows. If you want a new mother episode every day, subscribe on Patreon for as little as two bones. You get the patron-only Tuesday and Thursday shows, the book Oblega show where we look at important books, and the goddamn weekly behind-the-scenes show. And for only 25 bones, you could become a producer and get your name up here. Look at these people. These people make this show possible. If it, wa if it wasn't for them, nothing. We don't have a show. We got nothing, and, it go and it's garbage. garbage. And we have to just leave. We have to just basically walk away, and we don't even really know where we're walking. That's, that's, that's the truly troubling part about all this. But please, become a patron today. For as little as two bones, or if you, or five bones is another level, or ten, or you go the full 25 and you get up here. Big special thanks to these people. Love you guys. Love you guys so much.